so some of the key base plotting functions that you'll uh, use a lot, of course, is the one. The first is the plot function, which makes a scatter plot, um, and it can make other types of plots depending on whether you're plotting a special type of object. But for the most part, you usually want to make scatter plots. Uh, lines is a is a function that doesn't create a plot, but it adds to a plot, and so sometimes you want to. Uh, Connect a lot of dots together, so you want to make like a like a time series type of plot. You want to make lots of, and so you want to draw lines instead of a scatter plot. Uh, lines is useful for that. Um, points adds points to a plot, so sometimes you want to create a plot and then you want to add some other points that might represent a different group or a different subset of the population. Uh, text adds labels, so if you want to annotate the plot with uh, text labels. Title adds, um, so text can be used, I should say, to add labels within the plot. And the title function is typically used to add annotations outside the plot, like X and Y axis labels, titles, and subtitles, and things like that. Uh, M text is, the M stands for margin, so it's used to place text in the margins of a plot, both the inner and the outer margin. And the axis function is used for specifying the axis ticks. So here's a couple a couple examples of how to make plots and then adding annotating them. Here I'm plotting the wind and ozone that I had before, a scatter plot. Uh, but now I'm adding a, a title to the top of the plot. So here's you can see it's ozone and wind from in New York City. In this plot, I'm again doing a scatter plot, uh, but I instead of using the title function to add the title, I just I put the title directly into the call to plot. But then what I want to do is I want to subset, I want to kind of plot all of the data points that are in the month of May a different color. And so what I do is I subset the data frame just to include the observations where month equals five, and then I use the points function to add to kind of re-add points. But this time, color them blue. So you can see in the plot below that the, uh, the, the there are a subset of blue points, uh, and those correspond to the to the data points in the month of May. Now um, I could do um, uh, more subsets, so, so I can plot them in different colors. So here I pl I'm plotting, uh, but. Uh, the uh, the I'm um, initializing a plot, but the one thing I, you can see is that I've added the argument type equals n, and so what type equals n means it, it basically sets up the plot and initializes the graphics device, um, but it doesn't actually plot anything, so it doesn't put anything into the plotting region. It just makes a, a kind of it sets up all the other stuff in the plot without the actual data, and then as I in order to put the data into the plot, I kind of go through subsets of the data frame to add the data for the month of May and add data for the month of not May. So for the month of May, I make that color blue. And then for the other months that are not equal to May, uh, I just make that color red. So you can see all the other points are red. So now I can kind of accurately see which ones are blue, which ones are May, without kind of over-plotting existing points. And then as a last touch, I add a legend to the top right part of the plot so I can distinguish which ones are May and which ones are not May. Finally, one common thing that you uh, uh, will typically want to do is to add a regression line or a smoother to a plot. So here I've just added a regression line to the same scatter plot. So I first make the scatter plot, and you can notice I've changed the default uh, plotting character PCH to be 20. So 20 is a kind of small uh, filled in circle. Um, and then I fit a linear model to the data which is using the LM function. Uh, and then I just call the AB line function, which is another annotation function. Uh, and I just pass it the linear model object and I specify LWD equals to two, which is a, a thicker line than the typical default line. So AB line can interpret the regression model output and plot a line plot with a given intercept and slope. And so here you can see I've added the regression line to the plot. Um, and, so you can, and so you can see the downward trend. So all the previous plots have been single plots that you might that would appear on the graphics device, uh, but sometimes you want to uh, have multiple plots on a single device. So here I made two plots: one plots ozone versus wind, and the other one plots ozone versus solar radiation using the same data set. And so in order to do that, I need to set the par MF row equals to one row and two columns. So I can say I can make the two plots side by side, and then I just call plot twice. So every time I call plot, it uh, creates a new plot. And so the first one will be the, in the kind of left-hand side, and the second call of the plot will be in the right-hand side. Uh, and that's how I use uh, MF row. 
Now, uh, you can see that uh, when I use multiple plots, uh, some, I have a title on each plot, so that it tells me kind of what the two variables are. The first one's ozone and wind, the second one's ozone and solar radiation, and the third one here is ozone and temperature. Uh, but then sometimes you want to have a label that's kind of covering the entire uh, panel of plots. And so that's what the outer margin is for. So here in this call to par, I set MF row equal to one row, three columns. I set the margins to be a little bit smaller than the default. Faults. Um, and then I set the outer margin to be actually bigger than the default. The, B, the default for the outer margin is zero all around. So I want, on the top, I want a little extra space so I can add the title Ozone and Weather in New York City, which is kind of a title for the entire panel of plots. And then I call plot three times to make the three different plots. And then I use M text to um, add the kind of outer title to this panel of plots. So that was a quick uh, kind of introduction to the base plotting system. Uh, it covers some of the basic functions that you would use, that you would use including plot uh, and a couple of annotation functions like um, AB line uh, and points and things like that. So this, the, you can see that by creating, when you create base plots, you are kind of building up a plot by function by function, uh, and you kind of end up with a, with many lines of code to create one plot, and that's kind of uh, that's how that's typical of lots of base plots. Um, every plot starts with a function that initiates the plot, so like plot or hist or box plot, and then a series of functions which will typically annotate the plot by adding points, lines, text, and legends. Um, and so the the base this plotting system is very flexible. It, uh, it gives you a lot of control over all of the various details of the plot. Um, of course, this can be a little bit tedious uh, if you need to control everything all the time. Um, but often the defaults are okay. Um, and but the flexibility is quite useful if you want to make kind of publication quality plots. Um, and um, and, it's, and so it's nice to have that de degree of control. Um, with all the, for things like legends and spacings and all that, um, so and so that's the kind of the base plotting system. We'll talk more about the other plotting systems in other lectures.